welcome to Easter Rising Stories Book of the Week. This week we're looking at Killing It as Very Extreme, a book by Derek Molyneux and Darren Kelly, which has been published by Mercier Press. This is the third book of their successful series. Their first book, When the Clock Struck in 1916, is simply the best book on the 1916 Rising, which looks at in detail, battle by battle, the close combat surrounding the city of Dublin. Their second book, Those of Us Who Must Die, looks at the treatment of the last days in execution of the 1916 leaders, as well as the conditions the Irish volunteers found themselves in upon arrest. So how does their third book hold up? Well, yet again, Molyneux and Kelly have broken new ground with Killing at its Very Extreme. This book rewrites areas which have often been overlooked. It explores the War of Independence from many new angles. As always with books by Derek Molyneux and Darren Kelly, they objectively cast a cold eye on the brutality of assassinations, as well as the horror of reprisals. Urban guerrilla warfare, its ferocity, pain and terror are mercilessly perfected on Dublin's dark dreary streets from October 1917 to November 1920. It looks at the dogged tenacity of those left after the trauma of 1916, who refused to accept the detrimental rule of the greatest empire in the known world. And this is graphically explored in 336 pages. The harrowing execution of the young Kevin Barry is also detailed. From Lloyd George's hollow assurances that he would grant the young student a last minute reprieve to the executioner's whisper, I won't hurt you. The reader is brought right into the scene. They walk slowly out of the cell along a succession of silent prison corridors with Canon Waters and Father McMahon on either side of Barry. Until they arrived at the prison hang room where a hood was placed over Barry's head. Guards stood silently around inside as they then entered. The scaffold stood before them, surrounded by whitewashed walls. Executioner Ellis stood behind Barry and in a sudden signal move, fixed the rope in place around his neck. The room was silent apart from the muttered hum of prayers. The lever attached to a hinge mechanism in the wooden floor opened the trap door suddenly with a loud mechanical clunk, followed instantaneously by the dull snap of the rope breaking Barry's fall and his neck and spinal cord ending his life. The prison bell tolled as Barry's body, following confirmation of his death, was then carried out to the prison garden for burial. Prison inmates strained to see the sad procession from overlooking cell windows. A gloom descended. No one spoke. The north circular road outside the prison was also silent. Then thousands took to their knees once again in prayer. A note was placed on the prison gate announcing Barry's execution. Mark Sturgis wrote in his diary that day, Barry hanged this morning in Mount Joy. Would have been better to have shot him as a rebel after drumhead court-martial at the time, rather than hanging him as a murderer after a month. Once again, the authors Derek Molyneux and Darren Kelly have presented an unflinching, accessible account of the war waged against the British Empire, unleashing the full spectrum of human behaviour, good and bad, and from all sides. This book is available from the Hodges Figures website or also Amazon.co.uk. I'd highly recommend it.